You guys can not time this better. Oh, what's that sound? I don't think I can tow with this anymore. That's cracking off. I better call for help. Good thing I know people. So you're gonna end up putting these leaves, we're gonna go ahead and stick them on the... Yeah, so they'll be layered on the back. Oh crap, that's the SOS number. Oh, what you got? Brian's out there in the back country stuck. That drag is, he doesn't want to pull it, it didn't look safe. Looks like that's kind of a janky repair or something maybe. Yeah man, I got snow machines, let's do it. Load up the snow machines, we'll get the Volt, we'll throw them on the back, and we'll just get it out there man, let's go. Cool. Now we just enjoy the view and wait. Where are we heading? We're heading up to Kebler Pass, way in the back country, probably about 10, 12 miles from the pavement. We hyped it up a little bit, but we do have to fix something. It's tough to know what those emergency beacon things, but it sounds more like a, maybe a repair of somebody else already fixed but we'll see here in a few minutes i love everyone in colorado is just like always landing a helping hand so pay it back right pay it forward man we're getting all the bikes unloaded right now we've got of course our our tour guides cody and brayden they're gonna help us out as they take their bikes Bo and i will follow him on the on the sleds as we go up up the mountain to find this snow cat that needs some help we gotta strap down all the vault and everything to the sled so that we get everything that we need to do this quick little repair. Hopefully it's gonna be easy. We'll see, you really don't know until we get out there. All right, so we're at the front of the trailhead here. How many miles do we got till we find a... We're gonna go about nine miles on the road, just out in the middle of nowhere, and then they had 22 inches of fresh snow out there last night, so it'd be pretty epic. For a Texas guy, I don't really know what to expect out there. Like, what do I need to know as far as rules of the road here? We're gonna keep you on the road. You're pretty much riding on a 400 pound chainsaw here. So if you get off the trail, this thing will just dig in and it'll, you know, we got feet of snow out there. Yeah, so. I felt it get a little salty. I'm really excited to, yeah. to get to brapping on these things. Get cranked up and let's get out there. My saviors are here, weld.com. Well, we made it out here, we made it to the to the drag that we've got to fix. We're definitely gonna test out the volt to see how much water resistance it actually has because I've been up to my neck in it. <laughs> Let's check out this repair. I might as well just see before we even get started on anything that this is still alive. The batteries. They look dry. Let's see if it turns on and get everything hooked up. Try not to have too much water or snow. Any of the electrical bits. Deburring tool have more than one one uh, applications. You can deburr metal and you can get your snow out of your little holes here. Perfect. Turn this thing on. Got this plugged in. Let's see, fingers crossed. Ooh, I'm nervous. There she goes, it's on. Renegade Volt. We got it set to TIG right now. We're gonna be doing a stick job, so we'll go to our processes, go to stick here, go to this electrode version, because we might run some 6010, so we have rutile or cellulose. So we're gonna go with the rutile 6010 rod. Arc force, a little higher towards eight, and then that hot start, I think, too, is plenty. Uh, we'll plug our leads, and then we'll assess the damage and see what the deal is. See our magical backpack that we like to bring. Has everything you need in it, man. Extra batteries, grounds, leads, grinders. I think we'll be set, set to go. Hell yeah. We got the machine hooked up, we're ready to roll. We got the grinder out, from what I understand, we just gotta grind off a nasty weld and put some good stuff on. They said it was right on this connection. Well, that's not hard to spot. Good God almighty, they put enough on there. It ain't quality by any means. Let's, uh, let's buff it off a little bit and see, the, see like the, what's going on in there. Get all this paint and the rust. A little bit of that moisture off. Every weld loves a good Jimmy. This guy, I don't think, I think his name, we'll call him Galen. He didn't do a good job of cleaning nothing or welding nothing. We're gonna, we're gonna fix him right up. Good God, Galen! 
Get a close look at that camera guy. That looked like a freaking mule deer shit on it. Switching over to the fiber disc, we're just gonna flatten things up, get to some clean metal, and then we're gonna groove in with one of those Cubitron 3s, those real thick quarter inch discs. Once you get to digging, getting that, that booger off the top, it really isn't all that bad. There's a couple little bit of things you can see in there as far as some defects. We're gonna make sure that we get in there with that, that quarter inch disc and we're gonna put a new groove real deep and remove some of this weld too and get make sure we wrap around this area. Probably even come up and touch up this little wrap around while we're here. Pretty typical. One guy working and everyone else just standing around bullshitting. All right, I think we got to the root of the problem. Oh, you All right, let's weld something. Don't eat the black snow, kids. Clamp it on this little clean spot that we got for our ground. We put a little bit of heat in the ground in. I hope that works because we didn't have enough room to put on a freaking weed burner or a propane torch. Got our rods, just stick them right in the snow. That's a good place for them. We're gonna probably dig in with the 6010 first and then we'll swap over to some 7018s. 95 amps should be good for this first rod. Get on out of there. Viola, pitter patter, let's put a root in her. Yeah, that 6010 was freaking eating, son. Ain't nothing underneath that. Nothing can live in hell. Now we give her a, a quick jimmy. I will say, it did kind of go in a little cold, and maybe that steel's a little cold. Now the metal's hot. We put a bead on it. I am going to grind some of that down because you can get a lot of lack of fusions where we have uh, that 6010 bead is kind of rolling. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and still grind it out. We, we dug in, we ate in, we got the root of it. We're going to go ahead and smooth it back out before we slap the 7018s on. Just flat top it. Let's switch this machine over. Go to our settings. We're going to go to our stick rods. Go to our cellulose base rod. So that means that we're going to be working with those 7018s. I don't need as much arc force for these. I want a little softer arc. And then we're going to be moving to that hot start. I don't think we need a whole lot of hot start. I think that's still good from where we were at. And go back. 95 amps for our 332 7018s. Definitely good for snow. Just kidding. Now when you're welding in the snow, kiddos, everything's wet. Your hands are wet. My gloves are getting wet. So you want to be conscious of that. Anywhere this stinger has like a metal contact point, it's live. It'll go through them gloves and it'll wake you up quicker than coffee. But we're going to put this one little hot pass, if you want to call it that, right over top of that root that we put in with the 6010. Ooh. Wrap that side. All right. And then give her a jimmy. Something I love doing is grinding after every single layer, but I like to keep things even my whole way out. So if I see a bump the tire, well, maybe I was inconsistent, I'll grind it down, or maybe my restart was too high, or there's a pinhole. I'm going to grind it out here before we start putting more stuff over top of it. I mean, just a little bit of grinding. Just peace of mind, you know. Now we're going to put a two-beat over top of this, and if we need to, we'll do a little bit of wrap around to just put some good reinforcement on this piece and send her off. So I'm going to put a big bottom bead on. Making sure I tie into all the grinding that I did. And we're just going to do all of our stops on one side. Just to keep everything kind of hidden. Now we're just going to put that final pass on there. And then maybe do something around this little lift and lug. The biggest thing that I've noticed with this so far is just being shocked. I got wet gloves, a stinger with all these little screw points. If my glove touches that and I'm lit, it's going to light me up too. So I'm kind of being aware of that as we weld. Just hold that top bead right over what we just did. Make sure we got some good overlap. And it's going to get weird as we get to the end of this weld because we got to have to flip our wrist up to kind of wrap that little corner. Oh, flick at the wrist. We're just gonna put one more bead just across the top. It doesn't really need it a whole lot, but we're gonna come up here, kind of tie into this, 
fill all this bit of grinding in and kind of come taper back down. It's more for just, you know, just give it a little extra, just cause. All right, now the lid's on her. I think she's good to go. We're gonna go ahead and load up the Volt. We're gonna stick it back into the cab of this thing cause we got some more trails to ride. We're gonna have a good time since we're out here. Another satisfied customer. Let's go hit the trail. Oops. That's exhausting. 